Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV. Guys, I'm checking out. She tried to insult him and it backfired. Guys, let's get straight into this. Oh, oh my. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been fucked in the last three weeks? No. Whoa! I'm actually- yo, Get this off yo. me now. I'm done. Yeah. No, I'm actually f***ing done. Get it off me. I haven't had sex with anyone. I'm literally celibate. Mm. Why life? Uh... I f***ing hate this thing. Get me- no, no. Get it off me now. Are you using me? No. What? Yeah. Oh, this whole thing is a lie, because I'm telling the truth. I knew that. That's cap. <laughs> I, I accuse I you of capping. <laughs> We've all seen this before, haven't we? She got caught. What does she do? Plan B. Fake cry. I didn't even see one tear. That among the general population, support for gay marriage has been starting to decline in the last year. Why is that? It's because the arguments that actually brought about liberal rights for all minorities in the last few decades have started to get turned on their head and turned against people. What is the source of that? It is the gender ideology movement. What is the tripwire for the general public? It is children. It is people learning that their children are being taught nonsensical things. It is being seen by the wider public, most of whom are heterosexual and don't need to identify as cis or anything else. It is being seen from that vantage point as the LGBTQIA plus movement losing control of itself. And so a backlash is starting. And the backlash is coming because people are lying to children and are using children for medical experiments. There's nothing oh, funny ridiculous. about that. There's nothing that, that should cause levity in that. It should be treated by adults seriously. OK, no, Ava. So, Douglas, it's really important, actually, all of that point that you've just brought up, it's very on brand for you because, you know, you like to stoke fear. You've actually made a career out of it. We, uh, you know, I'll take you I... back to your book, The Strange Death Ava. of Europe, and you made a big fright, you know, you frightened the entire public about your thoughts on Europe, and we ended mm. up in Brexit. You weren't the sole contributor to that, but you yeah. were a big Can we voice stick on to the, the I will, I will. And then, you know, so now we're quickly. talking about LGBTQ, if I may say so and you're very creating... Quickly, Hang on, you spoke. You... So, so far, he's made some good points, and she hasn't even responded to any of his points she has no argument all she's done since she's been talking is basically personally attack him and try to insult him because she doesn't have an argument now Douglas. back on the trans issue when you're talking about lgbtq what you've just done there is basically say that the whole of america who have historically had a problem with gay marriage are now turning no. on it because a couple of children no. in a classroom in sussex want to be a cat no, if you can't no, see the no. ridiculousness in that argument i can't help you no. You see how off the mark she is with what she thinks. She tried saying that people are turning against this community because we have a problem if a kid yeah. wants to identify as a cat. When the truth is, we've seen what's happening in the schools. We've got all these brainwashed, mentally ill teachers and all these weird parents who are brainwashing kids, telling them they can be whatever gender they want. And we've seen kids going into transitional surgery. When we know for a fact they can't make rational decisions, that's the problem we have. You see how she tries to downplay it. And you know what's funny? She believes in multiple genders and she also believes that a man can become a woman and vice versa but she's also a feminist so how can you be a feminist and claim you're fighting for women's rights but you have no problem with a man going into women's sports and completely dominating it and also you can't even define what a woman is so how can you say you're fighting for women's rights when you don't even know what a woman is <laughs> it's so ridiculous uh, very quickly i i don't know ava anything about your career um i don't know if you have one uh, but you did try to imply that you knew something about mine and you just showed you know nothing about it because actually my 2017 bestseller, The Strange Death of Europe, was not about the EU. So you should learn at some point to read more than the title it was of the book about before Europe. commenting upon it. Was it. About, and it was about uh, so migration. Let me, but let me, but let me very quickly... And how let rude me are you? Quickly, how rude are you? Very quickly... Very you quickly, built a career me, out of fear-mongering uh, and you're now importing these you evangelical even built American a career. ideas onto UK you television. You haven't even it's built a odd. career, have you? And I want to be the first trans woman to have an abortion. The first trans woman to have a successful uterus transplant, ovaries and eggs included. I will have as much sex as it takes with as many trans women as it takes and let the phobes and homophobes scratch their heads wondering what to make of it. A biological male wants a uterus implant 
so he can have unprotected sex in order to have an abortion. What kind of freak show are we watching? Are we just Frankensteining ourselves? Are we doing experiments on ourselves now? And is this even legal? This guy should be arrested. I mean, 100%, Jesse, it's unbelievably sick. I mean, this is a man who's already living under the delusion that he's a woman who has perhaps a sexual fetish. He wants to take another healthy woman's organs to put them in himself. And then he wants to take the next step and try to conceive to then kill, to murder a human being, a baby. Wow. Yeah, he seems mentally stable. What is going on? These people seem to be getting worse and worse. He needs to be in a mental asylum. Okay, um... I don't think the trans movement is about safeguarding people's ability to express their gender. I think it was brought forth as a social issue for politicians to get behind, and now it's used as a wedge issue to weed out ideologically non-compliant people. To that end, I think it deliberately empowers the most emotional and dogmatic people, like those going after J.K. Rowling and Dave Chappelle. I mean, we all know there's a distinction to be had, but many of us pretend like there's not, because we've been told that there's not, and that the right thing to say is that there's no distinction. It reminds me of Orwell's 1984 where he's being tortured and repeatedly asked how many fingers are being held up, and ultimately the right answer is whatever the state says there is. Many accept these terms because it's the path of least resistance set forth by the people who own and run the megaphones who dictate what does and does not make a good person, as well as a loyal army of shock troops who will effectively come after you and your reputation both off and on Twitter if you step out of line. The solution always seems to be to control language and grant the ruling class more control. But this is my first job, like my first 9 to 5 job after college, and I'm in person, and I'm commuting in the city, and it takes me f***ing forever to get there. There's no way I'm going to be able to afford living in the city right now, so that's off the table. Like, f duh! If I was able to walk to work, and it would, it'd be fine, but I'm not. So it literally takes me, like, I leave here, like, I get on the train at 7.30, and I don't get home till like 6.15 earliest and then like I don't have time to do anything I don't I want to shower eat my dinner and go to sleep I don't have time or energy to cook my dinner either like I don't have energy to work out like that's out the window like I'm so upset oh my god nothing to do with my job at all but just like the nine to five schedule in general is crazy all I can say is Welcome to reality, and <laughs> just wait until she finds out about taxes. Jordan Peterson exposes the dangers of not having children. I'm 38. I feel like I've got through my early 30s without, almost luckily, when I look at what my friends have to deal with, with their children. I almost feel a little bit blessed. What do you say to that? Well, I would say that it starts to get pretty lonesome in life after 45 if you don't have a family. You have a very high quality career too. That's something that marks you out from, let's say, more typical people, and perhaps that's worth more of a sacrifice but you know you're gonna live till you're 90 in all likelihood and it's not easy to consider your life across its entire span and there's something to be said for developing a very close-knit intimate community around you if you can manage it you have children and you have grandchildren and to me what I've experienced in my life although I've had a very productive career it's definitely been the case for me that my family has been more and more important to me as I've got older and I don't think that that's a uncommon experience you're delusional I'm not saying okay, that to insult you care. but you're delusional okay i don't care you're looking for a less than one percent man and you yes you are she's a one percent female no she's not yes. you're not you not don't know me you don't know what i put to the table in relationships the, the most part the most a single part. uh you're a single mother you, you are not so you are not i'm not saying this to be mean but you are not oh, in the, you're mean let me finish <laughs> okay you are not in the one percent of desirable partners out there you're just not this is so crazy that these people have no self-awareness whatsoever you just got to be real with yourself sometimes and just accept that you are what you are and if you're a single mum with basically nothing to offer no billionaire is going to want to be with you and that's just the truth